Hey, Dan Larkin with you on CannabisIRL.com. We're in Los Angeles. That's why you see the beautiful background behind us right now. Someone's joined us. It's Rochelle Gordon. She's a freelance cannabis writer known around the country for some great articles, great content. And she's also an expert on a lot of products is what I'm learning. So I thought, you know what? We should sit down with you, Rochelle, and talk a little bit about what you're seeing out there in terms of products. You know, I'm a baby boomer. You're obviously not. Um, I've got old school experience, you know, where it was pretty much cannabis was limited to joints, uh, old carved out wooden pipes, and a few bongs. Uh, things have changed a lot since then. So, first of all, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. Oh, yeah. You brought some goodies to show me. What do you want to start with? I have quite a few samples here from the recent business to business industry event, Hall of Flowers. It takes place twice a year yeah. up in Santa Rosa at the fairgrounds. And essentially all of the top California brands are there. Oh, cool. So, and it's really quite something. And they have all these amazing samples. They cost $2 each. You, there's a bit of pandering to obtain them, but I have quite a few things. What I'd love to really start with, I think, um, is just some classic flower. Okay, and that, by flower we mean the actual bud. People my age, you might, they'll recognize it. It looks like pot, Yes, right? yes, the actual weed itself. But so, now it's called flower. Yes, flower to differentiate. So the first thing I'd love to show off here is some Alien Labs. Alien Labs is one of the hottest Southern California brands. Okay. Um, they're what, huge on What this makes brand. it hot? They have, first of all, incredible flower. Okay. It's consistent. They have an insane genetics, meaning they are growing some very original cultivars that you might not see. They're basically kind of the it brand to follow. If they're doing it, it's cool. Okay, so they're innovative. They're planting some really good cannabis plants and they're getting great products out of those plants. Yes, okay. correct. And okay. they sell Just making sure I, am, I understand. Yes, and they sell for a very high price point as well. Oh, okay. So an eighth of Alien Labs flower in a dispensary can run for seventy dollars plus tax. Wow, that does seem kind of steep. Yes, it's a very high end canisseur type brand. Sure. For an eighth of an ounce. Correct. Yeah. So this is some um, baklava, which is one of their um, flagship strains. You can have a little smell here. It's a hybrid. As oh, you can that's see, nice. very well cured, very well trimmed. It gives you um, a very nice mellow feeling. Okay. Now, let me ask you about the, the trim. What are we looking for in a flower like that, in the bud? What, what should we be looking at? So what you want to look for is the, first of all, the frostiness. Those okay. are the trichomes. Those are the active ingredients. Those are right. where the, that's where the real high is. Right. So if you see a very nice kind of whitish frosty looking bud, those are the trichomes. You also want to make sure that there are um, limited amounts of actual leaves. We want just the buds right here. So as you can see, there aren't many leaves sticking out. It's a very consistent shape wow. all around. It's kind of like getting a very good haircut. They actually have a thing on Instagram that, is, that Alien Labs does where they'll pull out nugs from their jars to show how great their trim job is. To show it's not just staged, that any jar that you would open would have that quality. Correct. Cool. So that's so Alien Labs. That's flour, F-L-O-W-E-R, not the kind you'd bake with. Well. You would bake with it, but in a different way. <laughs> right. Great. That's very cool. What else have you got? So another flower product that I would like to show you, um, and probably one of the hottest tickets at the Hall of Flowers, would be the Packwoods uh, pre-roll blunt joint. Okay. So let me back up again so that I understand. A blunt joint is a joint that's rolled out of cigar? Correct. Paper? Correct, but this one, it does not have the tobacco. It's actually a, um, a hemp leaf, but okay. it looks like a tobacco okay. leaf, yes. All right, so nobody's smoking any kind of tobacco here. This is strictly hemp and cannabis. Correct, and it has a glass tip for a filter, and it is also dipped in, um, in, a, in a cannabis concentrate and then rolled in keef, which is another word for the trichomes, the crystals. Okay. So essentially, they roll up a very, very fine uh, amount of cannabis in here and right. then dip it, roll it, package it. Wow, so you're getting like a three for one sort of experience. And what, what, what should you expect from that? For somebody like me, who's never experienced something like this, what would I be looking for? This will get you very high. Yeah, okay. It, it's going to do the trick. So this would be something that um, for kind of just the, the once in a while, 
consumer, you would maybe have this for a special occasion. Gotcha. Maybe um, maybe someone's getting married, maybe a retirement party, something like that. Right. You would maybe bring one of these babies along to light. Those um, who know would know that that's a pretty awesome gift and cool thing to share with other people. Correct. This would actually retail for around $50 plus okay. tax in California. Okay. Yes. And I suppose it depends on how many people are partaking that would be able to enjoy it, right? I mean, Yes, correct. So I smoked one of these with one other friend of mine, mm -hmm. um, who is also a very heavy user as I am. Right. Um, but for the novice sort of crowd, the once in a while, um, I would say you know a group of eight could easily enjoy this for a good 20, 30 minutes. Sure, yeah. and have some good fun and a few laughs. Absolutely, I would say more than a few. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> that's cool, yeah, that's something I've never seen before. I've heard about them, but I've never actually seen one up close, and that is pretty fascinating uh, to take a look at. Yeah, and even the packaging. Now, this is something that we're really noticing, especially in California with the branding. The packaging has been really, really unique and interesting. So as you can see, they put this sort of rubber. It sort of looks like wax stripped over it to seal it, right? Correct, That's correct. the look, but it's not actually wax. Correct, so yeah, so this really, um, this really impressive packaging and will make it stand out even more so on the shelves and make it that much more coveted. Sure, it looks like it's really exclusive because it's got that holographic kind of uh, seal on it as well too that hasn't been broken. Absolutely, and that's also there for compliance. Okay. So that we know that it hasn't been tampered with. Oh, makes sense. Yes. Okay, cool, something else? Okay, so why don't we move on from the flower category to the concentrate okay. category. So the first thing I would like to show would be this item from Cresco. So Cresco is what we call an MSO, a multi-state operator. Oh, okay. Cresco has licenses in several different states, meaning they can sell this strawberry banana live sauce in California. They can also sell it in other states. Now it has to be manufactured in the state it's sold in, but they've found some kind of standardization of production methods that allow them to have consistency in the product? Correct, they've oh, adopted okay. standard operating practices and been able to set up shop in multiple states. Um, you can also find them in Illinois in the medical market. I'm sure we'll see them there on the adult use side when they sure. begin next year as well. Yeah, on January 1, 2020. It's a very exciting thing for them. And so this is what's called a live sugar. Okay, actually. I don't know anything about what that means. Well, let's, let's learn. Let's find out, okay. So this is a concentrated version of cannabis. So essentially what they're doing is they're taking the active ingredients from a flower. Okay, that we learned about earlier. That mm -hmm. we learned about earlier, and they're able, using many different extraction methods, this one I'm presuming was um, a hydrocarbon, what they're able to do is they're actually able to take out, extract the active ingredients, and put them into a different sort of consistency. Okay. That you would then consume using a dab rig, as we call it, um, which is another a vaporizer essentially. Okay. I like to use my Puffco Peak. This is a portable smart vaporizer. That is not a bong, that is a Puffco Peak, something different. Correct, it looks like a bong and right. it works like a bong because it does have water, but essentially what you would do is you would take some of this concentrate, okay. as you can see. Just a little dab will do you. A little dab will do you okay. and you essentially you take a little piece. Because again, it's really concentrated. It's, it's very concentrated. Yeah. So let's say that um, on any given plant, let's say that this is 25% THC, 25% active ingredient, 75% plant material. This would be something like 70, 80, 90%. Okay. Right. So you also would consume a lot less of it. Right. So you take one mm -hmm. little dab, and with this device, it's really neat. You put the concentrate material in this little chamber. Okay. And there's an electric component inside. Oh, okay. So that, you don't need a match to light it, to burn it. No. You're just going to heat it up within the, within the rig itself. Correct. So essentially then what will happen is once it's on, the concentrate will turn um, into a liquid and vaporize. And then when you inhale through here, it goes through here through the magic of science right. underneath <laughs> and then pops up through so you can inhale it through the water, getting a very nice, smooth, clean hit. Now for someone like you, right. who maybe doesn't consume quite a lot, one dab will probably be great. Right, then another one maybe in another 10 years. <laughs> or, 
or at least give it 10 minutes. Okay, all right. <laughs> but, um, but for some people who are very heavy consumers, they really like this because it offers them a more efficient way to medicate sure. or to consume. And so you can maybe take one dab as opposed to smoking an entire joint. And that's kind of the thing too, with something that's that concentrated or that strong, if you will, or powerful, uh, really key for people who are using it medically uh, to whatever, whether they're dealing with cancer or seizures or whatever that might be, this is maybe something that they should look into if they haven't. Yes, if absolutely. If they're not getting relief from whatever other cannabis products they're trying. Yes, absolutely. I definitely recommend these for medical patients, especially those who are experiencing um, very chronic pain because the nice thing about inhaling this, you're not combusting it like you would smoke a flower. Um, you're vaporizing it so it's a lot smoother. Um, some people believe that it could be slightly healthier uh, than combusting flour. Okay. Um, and you can also filter through the water, which is very nice. So you get a nice smooth, smooth hit. Absolutely. All right, that's pretty cool. Um, go ahead, okay. yeah, why don't you show us how it happens? Sure, so essentially there's a little button, you can't hardly see it, but there's a little button that I just pressed. And I will wait, and in a moment, usually about 30 seconds or less, okay. as the chamber inside is heating, once it's ready, it will vibrate telling me it's hey, ready to go. It's ready to go. So we just sit here, we wait patiently. It's kind of like my Oral-B toothbrush when it shakes when I've gone 30 seconds on one part of my mouth to move it around to another part. <laughs> yes, precisely. Same technology. Same technology. So it just vibrated and you can actually see some of the vapor coming out mm -hmm. through the carb cap. This thing, when you manipulate this, it creates the, the vacuum for a hit. So. And when I pull that up, you can inhale the hit. And so what are, you're not getting, it's not, the vapor itself isn't hot or burning, it's just vapor. It's just vapor. It's and flavorful. Mm -hmm. And now this was the strawberry banana, and I can say it definitely does taste like a hint of strawberry and banana even. Um, and so the thing is though, I have a swab here. It just vibrated again, telling me the hit is over, oh, okay. which is really nice. But there's some residual material in here. So I take a swab. And I very gently just wipe out the excess material. Oh, cool. Because otherwise it starts to get sticky and gummy, not so And great. then you're not even sure what you're vaping the next time because you've got a mixture and maybe you don't want strawberry banana, you want some other flavor profile. Absolutely. You have to be consistent. You have to be intentional. Gotcha. So that's the Puffco Peak. Well, that's really interesting. Yeah, I, you know, I've seen them, I've heard about them, but I've never actually seen one in person or witnessed somebody use one. So now tell me, what do you experience? Do you feel a head high from that right away? Is this something that's gonna gradually wash over you or what? Well, the thing is, when you're inhaling a concentrate like that, it's going to have a very fast psychoactivity when it's going through your lungs. So yes, I can say that right now I did feel that. I can feel a little less pressure behind my eyes. I would say that the strawberry banana, although a hybrid, it's probably a sativa dominant. Okay. meaning it's more of a cerebral right. feeling. So I can say I'm feeling very uplifted right now and ready to teach you about some more products. Great, you mentioned something about uh, cannabis beverage. I think that's kind of a cool idea. I'm not a, like a big beer drinker. I like cannabis and I like beverages. So what have you got? So the beverages category is going to be huge okay. in, in cannabis. It already is actually, um, as far as edibles go. And <clears throat> this is one of my actually favorite products. Uh, in the beverage category, this is a Dixie Elixir. Okay. So this is their berry lemonade flavor. They actually have a few different flavors. They also have an, a half and half lemonade um, iced tea on Palmer that I really oh, like. Oh, wow, cool, yeah. yeah, I'm familiar with that. So this beverage contains 100 milligrams of THC in one whole bottle. Okay. But what's nice about this is the cap, actually, when you unscrew it, um, has a little dosage marker on it. Uh, does it have a 10 milligram, which is kind of the advised dosage, right? Correct. And may even be the, is it legal dosage? Is that how it needs to be presented? Correct. Okay. Correct. So when you take the cap off of this, you pour yourself a little shot glass, that's 10 milligrams. Okay. And we're talking about the THC content, right? When you say that? Correct. Okay. The active ingredient. Yes. So essentially, if you want to, you could have one little cup and share a whole bottle with your friends. You could 
screw the cap back on, put it in the fridge, have another dose later or tomorrow if you'd like. Sure. You can mix it with something else. Or if you're like, you're like me, you can just chug the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of a new, it's like a wine cooler, if you will, for a new generation. It can also be maybe a, a shot if you want. Yes. Or you could maybe have a regular lemonade or a regular Arnie Palmer and maybe you want to kick it up a notch. Give yourself a lift with it and you could mix it in. Yes? No? Yes. Bam. Okay. Absolutely. Right. And some of the other beverages you'll see, though, have a lower dosage. Okay. Um, the 10 milligrams that you were mentioning. Yeah. So essentially, the key is the packaging, at okay. least in California. Okay. So essentially, they, there are some beverages on the market that are essentially a cannabis-infused non-alcoholic beer. There's a very popular okay. one called Two Roots that's available in a few different states. Sure. Now, because that looks like a tall boy can and you open it, it cannot be resealed. There's no dosage meter. So one whole you know, 12 ounce beverage right. is 10 milligrams. Again, because of the laws here in California. Correct, and you'll find the same thing in Nevada as well. So everyone should be chugging that one and they're probably gonna be okay. Although we always wanna say, low and slow, when you're learning about any kind of cannabis consumption, edibles, it doesn't matter, right? Always, always start low and go slow. Okay. Absolutely, 100%. And the interesting thing though about beverages and why people I think are starting to like them, there's a few different things. First of all, especially when it comes to the non-alcoholic cannabis infused beer, spirits, wine, right. you're getting that social lubricant. So you can be at a barbecue with your buddies, you can be watching the football game, and every, while everyone else is having an alcoholic beverage, you can still be sipping your beverage of choice and getting into the kind of mood that you prefer, right? Sure. The other thing too is that they are often far, many, are far less calories than say a brownie or a cookie. Now, if for a person like me, who's a heavy consumer, I like 100 milligrams. If I go to the dispensary and buy a package of 10 cookies. Each with 10 milligrams. Correct. That's you can have all the cookies. Right, but oh, that's okay. going to be an awful lot of saturated fat. Okay, good now, point. Now, this does have sugar in it, sure. but it's a very efficient way for me to medicate. Also, the drinks, because there's a bit of a sublingual effect, meaning it can be activated through your mouth, the right. mucous membranes right. in your mouth. The drinks tend to also come on, hit, they hit you a little bit faster sure. than, um, than an edible. It's but. why people will use a, a tincture or CBD oil under their tongue or whatever else they're taking uh, because sublingually it'll activate more quickly. Correct. Now this, so the same kind of thing with this. Correct. And that's, but that's only a very slight component of the beverage. These are right. still considered okay. an edible. They do go through, you know, your stomach. Metabolize um, through your liver and all that. Okay. Correct, but they tend to go faster, and there there can be a sublingual effect. Okay. Yes. So that's pretty cool. So that's uh, new to me, not necessarily new to Californians or maybe people in Colorado or other legal states. Correct, and pretty soon we're going to see, I think, a lot more of these as more legal states come on, and in Canada they are about to begin selling edibles in their recreational dispensaries, and I do think that we're going to see a lot of cannabis beverages coming out. Um, for example, the head brewer of Lagunitas here in California mm -hmm. recently teamed up with Canacraft, a, a brand here, and created the first um, kind of hi-fi hops, a sparkling beverage with hops, no okay. alcohol. Okay, I've seen and pictures cannabis. of that. Yes, very popular beverage. They'll soon be bringing that to Canada as well. So question kind of on this topic, you may not know the answer. When they're using the word beer in there, it's important to denote, I think, that there isn't actually beer, right? Correct. Just, right. it just, it's like a beer, uh, but no actual alcohol. Right. So the Hi-Fi Hops is considered a, a sparkling beverage with hops, but Two Roots is considered a cannabis beer. Think of it, though, as a non-alcoholic beer, like an O'Doul's okay. or a Caliber. Thank you. But maybe it has a little bit of THC or CBD sure. in there as okay. well. Okay, I get it. What else have you got? So let's move on to another really fun edible that I discovered. These are some really interesting truffles actually, that I've picked up. Okay. Um, so a truffle, a nice little chocolate. Who doesn't like those? I know, right? They're, they're no, incredible. I mean really, who doesn't? Is there anyone? A fool. Okay, right, exactly. So, but what's interesting about these, the brand is the Truffle Man. And this is actually a person who is coming over from the traditional market. Okay. And he um, is very open about this. He used to stand uh, at the park in San Francisco. Okay. And yell truffles for sale. Okay. For many years, back in the old days and would sell these amazing truffles that he made at home. Right. Well, now he's being able to transition over to the 
regulated market and he's been able to obtain funding and come up with some really great product and, and, and beautiful packaging. Definitely not, you know, the plastic baggie that right. you would buy off a guy in the park. This well, is very a very high-end product. Something about that that you just said about his personal story of how he got to this product is really important and significant, I think, in the entire cannabis industry. And that is a lot of people who have been at this for a long time, especially in the California market, where you've got second generation people involved in the cannabis industry, they are being pushed out of the market because they can't afford the licensing and all of the regulation that goes along with having something that you're making originally in your own kitchen, right? So pretty neat success story for Truffle Man that he found the funding and has brought it all the way to this kind of packaging. Absolutely. You know, he's 100% stepped up his game. You know, we're talking about a commercial kitchen. We're talking about okay. standard operating procedures. We're talking about incredible branding. Yeah, so it can be done. It can be done. It can be done. And, and let this be a lesson for people who are maybe nervous or who feel um, defeated by, by the legal market that, yeah, it is possible. Cool. So, yeah. Tell me more about the product itself. So this one actually is a Mexican cocoa truffle. There oh, are yum. two chocolates inside of this okay. package containing 10 milligrams each. Okay. Um, so for a novice, you'd want to maybe eat a half of one or a whole one. He also has a salted caramel, um, which oh. I am very okay. excited to as try. As much as I like a Mexican chocolate, salted caramel. Yeah. I know, right? Right. I, well, what but again, low and slow though, low right? And low and slow, slow, no matter how tasty they right. may be. Yes. Very cool. What else is here? What do you want to show me? Why don't we move on, you know what? Why don't we move on to this topical? Okay. Let's talk about topicals. We haven't really- A lot of people my age, very interested in topicals, primarily for pain relief, you know, and I've been just for a while now, even making my own CBD at home. But when you can buy something that's licensed and tested uh, like this, I'm very interested. And I'm sure a lot of our, our viewers are interested too, so. Absolutely, yes. Topicals definitely, you know, could be quote unquote the new gateway to cannabis because for a lot of people especially, they like the idea that they can put it on directly to their affected area. It's not going to get you high necessarily. Right. Um, there's That's not an that important distinction too yes. because even though it's got THC in it when you're buying it in California or the other legal states, which again I recommend too because you want the full spectrum of the cannabinoids available, uh, when you do that, uh, it doesn't get you high when it goes into your uh, endocannabinoid system within your dermis and within your skin that there's no way you're getting high from that. Right, absolutely. Okay. So, you know, for folks, especially with arthritis, um, you know, this, this is a really great product because they're getting that relief without the psychoactivity. Cool. Um, so essentially this brand, Apothecana, huge brand here in California. Sure. Um, this extra strength body cream uh, contains 25 milligrams of THC and 25 milligrams of CBD. So it's a one-to-one. -one. Um, it also contains Arnica, Peppermint, uh, juniper, which are some really, really nice added um, herbs and botanicals. The kind of stuff you might buy as an essential oil or have used in a massage oil if you're getting massage or something anyway. Correct. So it probably smells really great and... Absolutely. Yeah, okay. it's really, really very, a very nice, very nice product. And actually, my older sister, who suffered from an ATV accident several years ago and still has residual pain in her shoulders, I gave her a sample of this product and she said that nothing has melted the pain like that. And again, that's a one-to-one -one THC to CBD ratio. Correct. You can also find other ratios, I take it? Correct. So they do have um, ones that are more CBD dominant. They have products that are more THC dominant. Um, for example, uh, Pop Pet and Barkley, another very popular topical brand, they have a three-to-one um, THC to CBD, which is very effective as well. Good to know, good to know. I like to, like to hear about those. Want to learn more about cannabis? Check out all the great information waiting for you at CannabisIRL.com. Cannabis in real life. Baby Boomer's number one source for all things cannabis. And subscribe to our YouTube channel too, and click the notification bell so you always see our latest videos. We're Cannabis in real life. CannabisIRL.com.